This video is designed to help us understand the procedure for creating a pixel matrix five by five. And this is to be used in a special application. It's a power board for the space simulator at the American Heritage School. Now, this procedure or approach to creating a matrix could be modified to have more pixels in each direction for whatever is required, but we're going to make a five by five matrix. This will allow us to specifically show images or colors in such a way that we can say what's happening on this power grid. The first step is to get the sum of these specific pixels, they are a WS2812. Now, there are different versions of the 2812 where they may have a backing like this one does. And this backing can be separated so that it has a sticky back on it. We're going to have to remove that because it's going to be in our way for creating our particular uh, pixel matrix. But the first step is to cut strips of five pixels each. Five of these strips will be used to create the first matrix. Something that's good to be aware of is that every 30 pixels or so, you will come across a spot like this that is soldered. And that's because they make these strips 30 a piece and, and then solder the ends together. So it's wise to find the first one of those and count back by fives. And you may have, you know, two or three pixels additional that you won't be using. That's okay. But then as you move forward, you can get 5, 10, 15, 20, all the way up to 30 before you run in to the next soldered section. So just to be aware of that, I think if you try to use the soldered section in the middle of a pixel set of five, it's very difficult. So we're trying to avoid that. When you do come across one of these soldered places on the pixel strip, it's best to just desolder them by using the soldering iron to heat all three pads at once and pull it loose. It's just that easy. When I uh, cut these into strips, I use a, just a regular pair of scissors. But what's important is to be able to spot on the strip this little fine line that goes between the pads. This allows us to then cut this strip such that there will be connections on each side of the cut, which we will need for hooking them back up. So one, two, three, four, five. And these scissors cut right through it, no problem. One, two, three, four, five. Another way to do this is with a pattern. Uh, I like this particular pattern because it has several different things that we will use as we put together our grid of pixels. But one of the things is just the five pixel length. So not that it's difficult to count the five, but just really quick to lay this down on this board that has a spot for five pixels. We can then cut. It's a good idea to pull this to stick to the backing, not onto the pixel strip. It becomes difficult when, like in this case, there's some glue left on the connections. When we go to solder there, it makes it more difficult. Once you have all of your pixel strips with the backing removed, you may want to check carefully to see that all the glue went with the backing. In most cases it won't have. So find a little paint thinner or a rag 
and clean it up. What we're going to do is shape these strips so that they'll come out something like this. Now, I think you can probably see that these strips each have a bend in them. I'd like to show you specifically how to do the bends because each bend is critical to keeping the strip straight and being spaced properly. So if we start with the end that has a plus 5V and then a D in, and there's a little arrow pointing this way, and then there's also a GND for ground. We're going to start with that end. We're going to take a, a pair of long nose pliers and place it right exactly up against the pixel and then bend it down 90 degrees. Then there's a little tiny resistor. We don't want to crush it, but we do need to clamp it right at the bottom of the pixel. And then we're going to bend that down. Then at the line that goes between pads, we're going to bend the other direction and be sure and lining it up just right. And then we start over again, the same process. The next pixel, we grab it, bend it down, and we can actually kind of push them together like that. Now we're at the bottom of the second pixel. Again, we want to be careful not to break the little resistor. And when you've done this for a while, you can actually get pretty quick at it. There we go. Getting right towards the end. Making our bends nice and perpendicular to the pixel. And we can then kind of push them together like that. And that's what we're looking for. With our pixel strips formed, as you see here, we are ready to begin attaching them to this framework. And the framework actually has a little ridge, and that will be what our folded area goes over. But you'll see we're actually shorter, but that's perfectly good because we're going to attach one end and then spread this just a little bit to match where the holes are in this grid so that we can uh, attach each one. Now the other very important thing about the pixels is that they have a direction. So right here is a little arrow that points down. Now the way these are going to be connected is one is going to go down this way and the output from this one is going to go to the input of the next one. That means that the arrow on the next one is going to need to point the opposite direction. We will continue this snaking operation through all five of the pixel strips. With our five pixel strips all formed just as we need them, we are ready to apply them to our pixel grid. Now, it's very important that we are aware of which direction each strip needs to go. And you'll see here, there's a plus sign and a minus sign and a direction. And it also has a, a marking as in. So we're gonna come in, and since this is the backside, if we were to flip that over, the in would actually be the top left pixel. But we're going to adhere them to the back. And so as we go down through the list of pixels, we want to make sure 
that we start with one that, if you can see that, it says DN and it's going down. So we're going to put it this way and we're going to stretch this just a little bit so that it fits pretty nicely and then glue it in place. Let it start to cool and then check the centering. Is that fairly well centered? Not too bad, we might move it a little bit to the side. Once we're pretty happy with our placement, we can then glue the other end. Now we can also adjust the placement using our pair of pliers. By doing a gentle squeeze right on the bend, we can then get these situated just where we want them. And then we're ready to apply some glue to this last pixel. If you glue just one side, then the glue will not be in the way when we're applying the next row of pixels. That first row had the arrow pointing down. Check this set of pixels. So there's the arrow. So we're going to turn this around and have this one stretch across here. And then as that glue begins to cool, we can turn this over and say, hmm, that's a little bit high before it's set all the way. Let's get it centered a little bit better. And you can see that. And we're ready to glue the top end. Looks pretty good. Now let's apply the rest of the pixels in the same way. Again, making sure that the pixels are going the correct direction indicated by the, the little arrow there. So we've got an arrow showing there. That means that this is gonna go this way. We'll put our little stretch in it. We'll need an in connector and an out connector. So the in connector has three pins. So we're actually going to take this and cut at the fourth pin. And now we've got a three pin connector. These header pins work as the mating connector and we can just snap off at three. And there we have it. As connectors in and out of our pixel matrix, we're going to use three wires, red, black, and blue, and just slightly longer than this board works just fine. We're going to take and cut those three wires. We first will strip the end of each wire just a little bit. We don't need a long 
section of bare. So we just trim that little bit off of each end of each wire. And then we're gonna do what's always best when you're soldering. We're gonna tin both parts of what we're gonna solder together. In this case, it's going to be the end of the wire for one and the other is going to be the pads on our pixel strips. To do our tinning, I just need some place to hold those wires a little bit still. And then we'll tin the wires. We're getting the iron on the end of the wire and then adding solder until we see that solder flow. It should actually flow right through the strands of the wire. That makes a good connection when we then solder it to the pixels themselves. We're going to do both ends. And the wire. And the wire. And again, that smoke that you see is the flux that's actually inside, going down the center of this solder. And that is key in getting the solder to flow. The way that we will be wiring the strips together will require soldering the in and the out with our connectors and wires. And then we will need to connect the plus five and ground across all of them. So each strip will have power. But in addition to that, we will also have the signal that starts right here. It will go right through and then it'll have to connect from this center connector over to the center connector of the one next to it. Then it flows through each of the pixels, comes out here and we'll do the center to center all the way through again and it snakes that signal all the way through the matrix. Let's first tin our pads so that We'll have an easy connection when we get there. Across these middle ones, all we need, and this end, is just that middle connector because we're gonna use other connectors that go in between for the power and ground. I'm just gonna turn this around so you can see. Soldering this end. So this is the in. It will take power and ground in. Here's one of the data connectors, another data connector, and another data connector here, and finally here. So, now we've tinned all of those. Let's put this back with in at the top. And Here's a sample of what this all should look like when we place our wires on here. Now let's tin the places on the back of the pixels that the power connector goes to. And we can see them here on the one that's finished. There's the first one, second, third, fourth, fifth to connect them all together. For the other connector, which is power, or the plus five. We're only gonna tin the end of this one because we'll solder its connection first. And then as we go across, we will tin each piece of wire where it's going to connect with the pad. And then 
And this last one, just bend this right to the perfect location. There we go. And it's very important that we make sure that the wire doesn't touch any of the other pads that would short out the power to ground. That would be a bad thing. Power connector side. Add the solder to tin each of these spots. And this final one right here will be done. And then it's a really good idea to check our work. This is a multimeter and it's set to check for a short. In other words, a connection right through. In fact, if I take my two leads and touch them together, it will beep. We should be able to connect all the way from minus at the first one to minus on the last. And anywhere along the way, it should also beep. But it should not beep when we touch plus. Here we are on the plus connector. But if we put our other, our, our black connector on, it should then beep everywhere where this is. This is plus coming in, so it should beep here too. We are down to our final step. That will be connecting this female connector to the input, connecting our wires to the output, and then at the end of the wire, our pins. And of course, we always tin our connectors or wherever we're gonna solder. Now we're not so concerned about which direction we have this connector, whether it's this way or this way, because what we've done is note on here how the matching connector should go in. And since plus is always gonna be the red wire, red data and the black wire. It should be a simple matter of soldering these three wires on. Center connection is the data one, which is blue. Ground or minus is the black wire. And we can take our, our little pin connector here, tin it up. Be sure that you don't connect two pins to each other with solder. Sometimes you have to remove some of that solder to get things connected correctly. With our pixels all wired with plus five and ground and data connections, we're ready to give it a try. Here's the connector from the last of a series and Again, making certain that we plug it in with the, the red lead into the positive side. It's lit up. Let's see what it looks like. What if we put one of these white covers over it? That's it, and we have got a functioning matrix.